Hey guys, I'm Alistair from Trail and Kale, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Hoka Clifton 9. So this is an interesting shoe from Hoka. It's a road running shoe primarily targeted at, I would say, beginner runners or also people who are training for a marathon. People who want to maybe up their mileage or just need to get base miles in comfortably um, without risking getting injuries because this is a very well padded shoe. There's tons of padding in the midsole. Um, and also the upper, there's tons of padded cushioning in the upper too, so it's super comfortable. A nice thick tongue here as well. Now before I go on with this review, please give it a like if you do end up enjoying it. Um, it really helps our channel grow when you do that. And I appreciate it as well because I know you're watching and you're enjoying these videos. And also this video review is very much complimentary to my in-depth review on trailandkale.com. I'll pop a link up up there and I'll put it in the description as well so you can go check that out. In that review I've got more pictures of the shoe, um, some photos of me running in them and also more deeper insights uh, because I don't want to make this video too long by going into all that here. So definitely go check that out afterwards if you want to learn more about this shoe. For anyone who is familiar with the Clifton series then if you've been running in the Clifton 8 the one before this one, uh, then you might want to know some of the key differences with this shoe and how it's changed from the version 8. So the main thing is the midsole has been given three millimeters to it. So that's all across from heel to toe. The stack has been raised three millimeters. And what that's going to do is give more cushioning to these running shoes. So you're going to get a more plush ride uh, it's going to feel more bouncy and overall more fun. And incredibly with that bigger midsole, this shoe is actually a little bit lighter, a 0.2 ounces lighter than the previous version, uh, which is awesome. The lighter the shoe, the better in my opinion, because uh, you don't have that extra weight on your legs. So your muscles don't have to work as hard um, during long runs or marathon training and endurance running. So I love the fact it's lighter. Um, and I believe they have done that by changing the upper quite considerably. So it's now a one piece upper um, mesh. It's very breathable as well. But this is all one piece going all the way around. And the seams join at the heel behind this articulated heel design here. So that's also covered up with some nice uh, tape here, which has reflectivity built in. So this is the only area on the shoe where there is reflectivity and that's on the heel. Um, yeah, and I absolutely love this articulated heel that you see on a lot of Hocker running shoes. Yeah, and the reason I love this design is because if you've ever had trouble with Achilles tendonitis, then you'll know that if you don't have something like this at the rear that takes away the pressure from your Achilles as you're running, um, then you're going to get pressure on your Achilles and that's going to agitate any symptoms that you might have, of might have of Achilles tendonitis. So if you are suffering from Achilles tendonitis, definitely go check out this article up here. I'll put a link in the description as well. But that will help you um, recover from that running injury very quickly with my tips that I've uh, tried and tested a few times and it's uh, got me out of that horrible injury very quickly. So hopefully it will help you out as well. A few key specifications of the Hoka Clifton 9 then. Uh, the shoe itself has a drop from heel to toe of five millimeters. So drop effectively means how much of a tilt there is from the heel to the toe when you're actually standing in the shoe. So a really heavy drop would be very steep, pointing downwards. Zero drop, there would be very flat, so that's as if not wearing any shoes or any padded heel support. But these are five millimeter and I really enjoy running in a five millimeter. Uh, many hokers right now seem to be sitting at the five millimeter mark and I love them for that. The Hoka Clifton 9 weighs 8.7 ounces. Uh, so it's very lightweight. I have a US size nine and this one weighs 9.2 ounces which is very light for such a heavily padded shoe, um, which has so much cushioning and comfort. You just don't expect a shoe like this to weigh so little. So 
It's a very light shoe. It feels extremely light when you put it on as well. So it's a real joy to run with because of that. They do fit true to size. Uh, if you're used to wearing Hoka's or Nike's or Brooks or on running shoes, then I would recommend going with the usual size. You won't be disappointed. They fit, should fit very snugly. And the other important thing to note is the toe box is medium width. So this area here is medium. So if you've got average uh, size feet, then you should be happy with the fit of these. There are also recycled materials going into this shoe. So that's great. And it's also vegan friendly too. A few of the standout features of the Hoka Clifton 9 then, I would say would be, firstly, I'm gonna mention the upper, which is this section of a shoe, everything above the midsole. So I'm gonna be talking about the, the tongue, this articulated heel, the lacing system, and basically the engineered mesh that is used to create this upper material that wraps around your foot. Um, I really like it. There's tons of padding around the edges. Um, it's just super soft on your feet. The tongue, which is gusseted as well. Uh, really nice. There is a loop on the tongue. And what that means is your laces can go through there and it stops the tongue from traveling when you're running. And it does a really good job of that as well. The upper is very breathable. I like to test the breathability of uppers by putting my hand in the shoe and then just blowing through the material like so. And that tells me how much airflow goes through and of course how much airflow can go out and allow your feet to breathe and regulate temperature. So I'm very pleased with how the Hoka Clifton 9 regulates temperature and how breathable the upper is as well. And it's interesting because there's always a toss up between breathability and also durability of a shoe. So if you were to have a very thin upper, which was super breathable, it's unlikely to be very durable. Um, but who could do a good job of having breathability zones so that it's not super breathable all over the upper, which means there aren't too many weak points where durability could be an issue. So. Really happy with what they've done here. And as I mentioned earlier, the articulated heel is super nice. It's so comfortable to slip your foot into there. And I just love the way when you're running, you don't get any agitation from this part of the heel of the shoe because it really doesn't dig into your Achilles. Um, it allows your foot to kind of just rock back and not push on this section. And I really like that. The second important feature to mention then is the midsole, which as you can see is pretty striking. It's super plush, very bouncy feel to it. Uh, a lot of fun to run on. Um, I think beginners are gonna absolutely love this shoe for that $145 price point. Uh, but also because it's just so comfortable, bouncy and fun. And when a shoe's like that, that basically keeps your motivation high. It makes you want to go back out and run more and more just because it makes running on roads that little bit more fun. The cushioning also makes that run feel that much easier as well. So once you complete your run, your feet are going to feel more fresh than say a more minimal shoe. So fresh feet and less chance of injuries. And why wouldn't you go for that? Especially when you're a beginner runner and you're upping your distance uh, it's a very crucial stage of your training when you first start running because you don't want to overdo it or overtrain because then that could set you back uh, weeks maybe even months and it might put you off running altogether so you really have to start with a comfortable shoe you don't want to maybe invest too much money in that shoe um, because you don't know if you're going to stick with running so for those reasons i think the hoka clifton 9 is a great shoe for beginners and it's also a very good shoe for people training for a marathon because similar reasons, it's a very comfortable ride. It's fun. You can get through many, many miles of training in these shoes. Um, and your feet will feel fresh at the end of those long training runs. So for $145, that's certainly worth it in my eyes just to get that base mileage up for marathon runners. The other interesting feature then is the Durabrasion outsole. 
Very nice, very grippy, and Hoku has made it more durable than the previous version, the version 8 of this shoe, so yeah, grip's very good. Uh, can't complain about anything there. Quickly going over the performance of this shoe then, I've been having a lot of fun running in the Hoka Clifton 9. The best way to describe this shoe would be a reliable running shoe that will allow you to put lots of miles in and feel good after your run because it's so comfortable your feet will just feel fresh after those long runs. Um, and also because of that very large midsole and high stack height and plenty of squish plushy cushioning in the midsole. It's going to be a good shoe for heavier runners as well because it's going to give you enough compression with enough energy return as well. So it's kind of a perfect shoe for beginners, heavier runners or people looking to put more miles in. I've been having a lot of fun. The outsole has been really good. There's no, no slipping going on. Plenty of grip. But I will keep you posted as I run in these shoes more because I am choosing to keep this shoe and I'm going to be putting in lots of distance miles, slow recovery run miles in with these shoes because I love them so much that I'm just going to keep running in them. Finally then, is the Hoka Clifton 9 worth your money? Yeah, I think it's um, pretty obvious listening to this review that yes, I personally think they're worth your money for $145. There's not really much competition out there for this shoe. There is a Nike Invincible 3, which I reviewed. I'll put a link up there. Reviewed that recently, and that is a super plush, bouncy, fun ride to it. But it's a lot more expensive. It's about $185, I think, or $180. Um, and it's not as stable as this shoe. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend going for this shoe because of that price point, the stability, the cushioning, the comfort. And it's a nice looking shoe as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of a look of a shoe. If you've tried this shoe as well, maybe you've tried one of the earlier Clifton running shoes. Let me know your thoughts on the Clifton range. I'd love to hear it and uh, get to know you guys a bit more. Well, thanks for watching this Hoka Clifton 9 review. I really hope you enjoyed it. it gave you some insights. Once again, definitely check out my in-depth review on trailandkale.com. I'll put a link up there again and a link down in the description. And make sure you just take a look at the, the website. I've got tons more outdoor gear reviews uh, just like this one and also lots of running advice for you to read as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.